What's up? How are you guys today? I'm going to give you a supplement update of what I'm currently taking and just a simple reason as to why I have extensive and in-depth videos on my YouTube channel. So if you have further questions, you can search Frank Tefano B vitamins, Frank Tefano zinc, copper, whatever it is. I have an explanation for it on my channel. All of these products are available on either organsupplements.com or I will set up an Amazon shop if you're not in the US or you want a capsule instead, it's up to you. So in the morning, I've been taking vitamin C and magnesium. Uh, when you consume a lot of food and your body's under stress and you have liver damage, like I used to work out a lot, so I kind of eat more than my body's naturally supposed to. The antiscorbutic properties, vitamin C, ascorbic acid, is very helpful, especially for skin health, collagen turnover. And I do notice that sometimes I have gotten gout flare-ups when not taking vitamin C because it's a very important vitamin for digesting and metabolizing carbohydrates. So uh, this is sodium ascorbate. You can use ascorbic acid capsules, whatever you like. I think that's the safest bet on the market. There are issues with the acerola cherry powder, the camu camu powder. So try both, see which one you feel better on. And this will be on Amazon. The most significant thing I've been able to do in the past two months especially is increase my magnesium dose. So, you know, I used to be very magnesium deficient because I never really supplemented it. Carnivore diet isn't too high in magnesium. I was getting a lot of sun, vitamin D, which uses up magnesium very quickly. So I have finally been able to go up to 300, 400, 600 milligrams of magnesium per day, whereas before, even just taking 200 milligrams would activate too much vitamin D and give me insomnia. And when I do take magnesium, I feel so much better and energized because it is one of the most important minerals in the sense that we have to get a lot of it in our diet. So this is a magnesium oil spray. Uh, since I cut my hair, sometimes I spray this on my head, I spray this on my body, my stomach, all over the place. And I also take either the oral liquid magnesium we have on organ supplements or just a regular magnesium glycinate supplement just to try to get a lot of magnesium in. With the meals, I take vitamin B1 almost every single time. And sometimes I'll take methylfolate, which is just the more absorbable form of folate. Sometimes they have different forms that you don't want to take. And this is for antioxidant cycles, helping the liver out. This is because vitamin B1, like vitamin C, is used up heavily in carbohydrate metabolism. And when you look at the B vitamin profile of whole grains versus like refined grains like white bread, white pasta, which I prefer to eat, the most significant difference is the B1 content is a bit lower and the B3 content is a bit lower. That combined with the body needing those nutrients to digest carbohydrates, it helps and it feels better. And uh, a few of my viewers told me that vitamin B1 also helps bind to toxins. So what you can really do is get each of the B vitamins individually and start supplementing them. We do have a B complex on organ supplements that has natural ratios, but maybe in the future we'll have the separate B vitamins. The reason I don't take like vitamin B3, vitamin B6, vitamin B5, or experiment with the other ones a lot is because they're not as safe to take and the doses of most supplements, especially the ones they have on Amazon and stuff, are just unnaturally high. It's not indicative of what should be in meat. So maybe we'll have options in the future. And then here uh, we have a bunch of minerals. So molybdenum, I take a few times a week. It's antagonistic to sulfur. It's usually high in beans. I feel a lot better when I take it. The manganese, I don't notice as much of a difference. I'll take this maybe once a week, once every two weeks. The selenium, every two weeks. You don't really want to take too much of it. It's, it's hard on the liver to process especially, but it is very important and most people don't consume foods that contain enough selenium. Boron, I'll throw it in here and there. Usually I forget to take it, but you know if I miss it for a few months and then I take it, I do feel like a boost when I do take it. Copper, I'll take maybe once a month and zinc twice a month. So, you know, we're not talking, you know, twice a day, three times a day, every day. I have tapered these minerals in to the point where I don't really have to take them that consistently. 
Now, I will be doing a hair mineral analysis soon. I'm not sure when to see how the magnesium supplementing has affected me, if I'm taking enough of all of these other minerals. However, you know, if you're coming from a carnivore diet, a keto diet, if you've never had a hair mineral analysis, which I have a video on that you guys can search, uh, maybe I'll link it down below as well, that's the only true way to know what your mineral status is and what you should and shouldn't be supplementing. So it's nice to stay updated on that. And the doses we have on organ supplements are safe to take. So if you do prefer capsules and you want to get something on Amazon, just keep in mind, you know, the selenium dose might be three or four times higher than this. The manganese molybdenum dose is usually like 10 times higher. So the, these are very safe, normal amounts that occur in food. Uh, so if I did have a regular selenium supplement, maybe I'd take it once a month. If I had a regular molybdenum supplement, maybe I'd take it once a month. The body is very efficient at recycling minerals, especially if you're healthy. But the reason you want that hair mineral analysis is if something's irregular, if you have imbalances and your body is just using up certain minerals very quickly. We also have the iodine here, which I don't really take like actively in a meal. I use it when I brush my teeth, when I wash my face. So I'll literally put this on my toothbrush. I'll put a little bit in my water flosser. I think I've showed you guys that in past videos. And sometimes I might actually get a little too much iodine, but I really like it as an antiseptic. Sometimes like if I go to a restaurant and have a crappy meal, I'll rinse my nasal cavity with it. So I do have a lot of iodine, but not like sitting down and taking it by the drop with my meals. I use it to clean my body, my mouth, everything, and it does get absorbed transdermally, orally, basically anywhere you put it. So that's the quick update for you guys. I have been feeling a lot better since I've been getting some sun. I've been trying to ground more, be a little more active. And even though the diet hasn't been too consistent and excellent, 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 I would say the, the magnesium, vitamin C in the morning has been a great boost. And then taking the B1 with the meals as well has really improved my sleep. And if I feel like I want more energy, I will take the, the full eight. But thank you guys for joining me. As I said earlier, you can go to organsupplements.com or amazon.com slash shop slash Frank Tofano to check out all of these supplements. So you might be taking a lot of supplements initially, but ideally after a few months, you're not really taking anything at all. So it's not much of an investment because you're not going to like have stacks and stacks of supplements because you fix the imbalances and then the natural foods for the most part, maybe you have to put a few things in here and there with the exception of certain things like magnesium and, and vitamin C. But thank you guys again for joining me. If you could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. I'll see you guys for tomorrow. Thank you.